Thanks for clicking on the video. My name's Tom Alsop. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can develop the perfect forehand take back and swing that is appropriate for you, for your game, and for your physique. First of all, if you appreciate me making you videos while stood in the rain, make sure you hit like and subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. All right, let's get into it. I know it's difficult to believe, but men and women and children are built differently. Channel's probably banned already, but I'll explain. Guys tend to be a little bit stronger in the shoulders. Women have a lower center of gravity and are a little stronger in the hips. Obviously, they have kids and that changes a lot of things. So women tend to use their hips a lot more. Guys tend to use their shoulders a lot more. And this will change pretty much everything about the, the take back and the, the shape of the entire swing. So the way I hit a forehand, being a proper manly man, as you've probably noticed, right? I'm gonna use my shoulders. This is where I feel my strongest. So when I take the racket back, I get my elbows high, and this is really gonna engage the shoulders. Now from this position, it's quite simple and natural to swing the racket just at the right of my body. I don't need to go behind my back because this setup here, this pronation, allows me to just lower the racket, supinate and pronate and never need to go behind my back. Actually, I have a great video on this. You can check it out. Pronation, separation, supination, pronation. If that interests you, click on this link. The way females tend to take the racket back is to do so while staying connected to the strongest area of their body. So they would supinate the arm as they're taking it back is instead of pronate the arm. So the elbows stay in and they'll take it back like this. Even people who, like Ash Barty, who takes the racket quite high, it's still a little bit of a supination move instead of a pronation move. So they'll keep the elbows in and take the racket back like this. Now, the natural swing path from here is to go around the body. If you're someone who keeps your elbows in and you take the racket back with slight supination with the arm instead of pronation, what you don't want to be doing is trying to keep the racket at the right of your body because all you'll end up doing is having a very restricted short swing. There's a little exercise that my friend told me about where you put your arms together straight and try and touch your elbows. Guys tend to not be able to do that and women can. Now, we, we were in Thailand when he told me this and I'll be honest, it, it's not foolproof. I certainly don't want you to think that I'm saying that women should be taking it back like that and guys should be taking it back like this. I'm just explaining why different people gravitate to different types of swings. And as a coach, all I wanna do is help you to find the swing that works for you. What I really hate is when people, coaches, think that the ATP style stroke is the superior swing and everyone should do it that way. That's just not how tennis works. Even if it was superior, even if it was the best way of hitting a forehand, it might not be the best way for you. If you feel more comfortable taking the racket around your back, keeping your elbows low, essentially supinating the arm as you take it back, then stick with that. All you need to do is make sure that the shot is fluid you have a nice rhythm, you have coordination and timing, and you've got yourself a great tennis stroke. Now, I'm already getting bogged down with this ATP versus WTA, but in reality, there's not just, it's not just black or white. Right? There's, a, there's a whole spectrum to this. But I do think that the women in general will always supinate a little bit more naturally as they take the racket back. And I think guys, not all guys, but a lot of them will just want to use the shoulders a little bit more, which will cause them to pronate as they take it back. Now, the biggest load of nonsense is coaches having a problem with breaking the plane, which means, if you don't know what that means, congratulations, 
you've not watched a lot of rubbish videos, which means that you can see the racket behind my back. Now again, this only happens when players are supinating as they take it back, and then all the space is this way. That's not a problem. Just because you see my racket behind my back doesn't mean the swing's too big. One thing I forgot to mention was that children tend to swing around their body. That will be their natural swing. Now you can force them to do something else, but naturally they'll swing around their body because it helps them to generate more power. As the boys get a little bit more developed, start getting stronger shoulders, they will naturally evolve to more of an ATP style swing. Now I wanna share something with you that's gonna be pretty cool to watch. I was working with a girl the other day. She came to me with a forehand that was somewhat of an ATP style stroke, meaning the racket was staying to the right of her body. She'd been told not to take it back and break the plane. But because of this, I think she'd developed some unnatural movements. I saw her feeding a tennis ball in, dropping the ball and feeding it in where she would do more of a typical WTA style forehand which made me think, well, that's what you naturally do. This is what you naturally want to do is swing around your body. You just think that you should be keeping the racket to the right of your body. So you've developed this technique that isn't really what you want to do. It's not what your body wants to do. Drop a ball, feed it in, pay attention to what you're actually doing when you do that. Let's do the same thing. Feel like that racket slides around your back and you'll see how much of a smoother, more coordinated stroke that she ends up with after a few minutes. If you want to develop an ATP style forehand, check out this video here. Thanks for watching.